Okay, so whenever we are dealing with a patient of septic shock when in which we have given fluid resuscitation and we have taken vasopressor, still the blood pressure is not improving. And at this stage, uh, we think of increasing the dose of vasopressor, still the BP is not picking up. So as per the guidelines, we think of adding the steroids. And when we think of steroids in septic shock, we think of hydrocortisone, which is 50 milligrams 6 hourly, which is stress dose of uh, steroids, which is required in critically ill patients. But there is one more steroid which you need to consider is fludrocortisone. So what is the difference between hydrocortisone and fludrocortisone? So hydrocortisone has both glucocorticoid activity and mineralocorticoid activity. What is glucocorticoid activity? Glucocorticoid activity means that it has anti-inflammatory properties as well as it helps uh, in the immune modulation of the patient. While Mineralocorticoid activity means it acts on the sodium and water balance in the body, basically cause sodium and water retention in, uh, in patients. It, it helps to maintain. So hydrocortisone has both the properties, while fludrocortisone has a very potent mineralocorticoid activity. So it is not recommended routinely in septic shock, but fludrocortisone is uh, given in patients who suffer from adrenaline insufficiency, like patients who are long-term steroid dependent, something like that. So in such patients, fludrocortisone is used. So what's the role of fludrocortisone in septic shock? So in 2024 May, there was a systemic review and meta-analysis meta in which uh, they compared hydrocortisone alone in septic shock and hydrocortisone plus fludrocortisone uh, in septic shock. The dose of fludrocortisone is 0.1 milligram OD, once a dose, once daily, while the hydrocortisone dose is 50 milligram, six hourly. So they compared two, sort, uh, two sets of patients from the data. So, in patients of septic shock, use of hydrocortisone alone and in patients of septic shock, hydrocortisone and fludrocortisone started simultaneously in such patients. And the, what the data showed that in patients in which hydrocortisone and fludrocortisone was started uh, from the start, from the initial days, the all-cause mortality was a little lower as compared to those with the hydrocortisone alone patients. So, in, in sick patients who are not responding to um, uh, vasopressors and patient is very sick and we think of adding steroids, we can think of adding hydrocortisone and fludrocortisone simultaneously based on this uh, meta-analysis. Though still it is not in the guidelines, but if we have a patient in front of us where we think we need to do something beyond if it is not responding to hydrocortisone, we can add on on the second day fludrocortisone also. So you need to read about this. It is very, very important. And thank you for listening.